Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is full HSS. So when we refer to full HSS, we're referring to the fact that you now have the expanded version of all the options within HSS. For the limited version, which really only gives you parallel cuts linear and parallel cuts constant Z, I refer you to the HSS Express video in this intro series. As well as uh, in the HSS Express video, we cover a lot of the basics of HSS. So in this video, I'm just going to be covering the additional options you get with the full HSS. Let's review our previous toolpath here. So in terms of a constant Z, it will take whatever surface we select here and slice it up along the Z axis. So if we take a look at this from the side view, you can actually see that it's slicing it up in the Z direction. So as we go along in Z, we're machining around there, and then once we get to more of the U shape, you can see that it begins to jump around. So for a 3D surface like that, HSS constant Z might not be the best option. If it's your only option, then obviously it's the one you have to choose. But getting these curvature, but getting this kind of slope and then uh, increase um, in the Z direction again, um, that's causing a lot of jumping around. That's kind of a waste of time there. If you were to try and do that with linear, you might change the direction so that you're staying on top of the part. But again, you can see that it's kind of it's a little short movement there. It's kind of a waste of time also. And the finish is probably not going to be that great because you can see that there's a lot of movements in there. Uh, we'd rather have nice straight lines or at least nice flowing lines that follow the flow of that surface. And you can achieve that by using one of the other options in the HSS window. So we're going to go through that with this first one here. Because this right here is a good example of the morph between boundary curves. But let me open this up and we can take a look. So when we refer to HSS Express, we're basically talking about this section here, linear and constant Z. These were covered in the HSS Express video. We're going to cover the rest of the guys down here. Now, what you're really looking at here is we will be adding additional geometry, depending on which technology we choose, that will allow us to tell the tool how to travel across that surface. So if you recall, the geometry is a drive surface. I've told it that I'd like to finish those surfaces there, but I'd like to follow this curve on the top and then eventually morph or stay parallel on this curve and, and blend as we go to the other side and become parallel with this side. So when we refer to morph between boundary curves, we're basically saying stay parallel on one side, get that nice flow, and then eventually be parallel to the bottom side, which means it'll blend the toolpath as it goes across. If we take a look at that here, you can see that it is a nice toolpath that just follows that curvature as it goes along. One entry, one exit, and the, the lines of the toolpath, the toolpath wireframe seems to follow that surface. That will give us a nice looking finish. We'll jump ahead to the toolpath parameters. Every one of these other options, the toolpath parameters of maximum step over, that is still a step over along the curvature of the surface. Even though we're blending, we're still looking to keep that maximum step over. So it might actually reduce the step over to keep the blend, but there's a maximum step over that you're controlling there. And then in the toolpath parameters under sorting, full HSS gives you the ability to add spiral. So in addition to one way and zigzag, we now have the ability to spiral a toolpath. In the case of, let's say a surface like this that is connected, that's continuous, the toolpath would go all the way around as it goes around. If we were to use one way, we would go around, feed down, go around again. If we were to use zigzag, we would go around, feed down, and maybe go the other way. With with spiral, we can go on a one-way cut, but keep the tool down. By like keeping the tool down as we progressively move down in the Z direction, it becomes much more of an accurate cut. Now the remainder of this, and, and the differences between uh, HSS Express and full HSS would be found in roughing and more. In roughing and more, you actually get more than just the multi-passes. You can get depth cuts, which allows you to add some additional passes in the tool axis direction. Rotate and translate. So in the case of if you have a part that is symmetrical, you could add, you can rotate around a central axis or you can translate along a linear direction. So outside of using the transform command in five, in five axis and HSS toolpath, you can use the rough and, uh, rotate and translate option. There's also the mirror option that mirrors it about a certain plane. And then under stock definition, this one can actually be useful if you're doing some sort of roughing with the toolpath, or if you've already finished a face 
and you need to finish with a smaller diameter tool in a, in a smaller area, in a crevice or in a little nook. Um, what this does is it will analyze the remaining stock, so the stock definition, and it'll see if there's any material that the tool would come in contact. So this basically turns the HSS into a stock recognition toolpath. It will determine that maybe there's only a little bit of material down here, all this has already been finished, so it'll trim this toolpath to only the area that needs to actually be machined. So this is called stock definition, but essentially it is the stock recognition mode of the HSS toolpath. So now that is morph between boundary curves. That's when you choose two curves to dictate the travel of the tool. But maybe there is a surface that only requires a one direction, and it's not necessarily a linear one. Now in this case, my, my example here that I'm going to use first is perpendicular to curve. Now all this means is that the toolpath will take a perpendicular movement to whatever geometry we choose. In this case, if we go to geometry, you can see we're still using a drive surface. In this case, it is that flat surface there. And I've chosen the line on the bottom there. Now this being a straight line, it's gonna make it look like it's linear, but it's actually staying perpendicular to that surface, to that, to that, uh, that, that contour as it goes along. Same surface, but now switching it to parallel to the curve, we remain parallel to that line as we go across. So whatever shape the surface takes or whatever shape this contour takes, it will remain parallel to it no matter where we go along the surface. We take a look at parallel cuts constant Z on this dome shape over here. We can take a look at the same sort of functionality we saw in HSS Express. As it goes uh, down in Z, going from a more vertical position to a more horizontal position, you can see the step over begins to space out. That is again because the, state, the step over in the constant Z is a Z step down. It's not necessarily along the surface curvature anymore. So that's why you're getting this kind of fanning. But what I really wanted to show with this particular one is the ability to do the spiral. So you'll notice this is constant Z but it is not stopping and starting in the same position. It keeps a constant movement as it goes down. And additionally, if we open this up, we'll see in the link section, in the links tab, how we handle gaps along the cut. So let's review. Constant Z, that is my surface. You'll notice that the surface is not continuous. It has that break in the middle there. It has that little uh, slice in the middle. So how do we account for that in the gaps? Well, in the gaps, we actually have some additional functions in here as well. So no longer is it just direct or clearance area, we can now tell it where we'd like it to retract to. So we have the safety distance, we have safety distance and rapid rather than just feeding. Uh, we can follow the stock, we can do incremental uh, areas. In this case, I've actually chosen blend spline to get that nice blending there. So this actually would uh, allow me to not have to mill this out completely. I can just do finishing of the dome first, and that will keep me doing feed moves in the dome direction. So let's take that out of there, and we'll take a look at the projection toolpath. Now, HSS projection is more of a default kind of standard kind of toolpath where you choose the type of toolpath you're looking to project onto the surfaces that you've selected. Right now we have it set to project spiral. You can see there essentially what I've done is from this top view, it is a spiraling toolpath that has been projected onto these surfaces here. So within the outside edges of the surface, I've projected this spiraling toolpath in the Z direction. I've got it to auto detect my sensors. So that's why it's found that sensor there. And I auto detected the radius as well. So starting from a zero radius dead center, I spiraled out, uh, pretty much it's grayed out only because it can only go so far. But you can see that it recognized that at least at this point, that's where the spiral can go to. Other options in the HSS projection are a radial toolpath, which essentially will just move out in a star pattern. So once I do that, you'll see that it has very similar options there. You can do a save and calculate on that one. And then you see you get a spiraling toolpath. If we zoom in on this, you can basically see that the step over is now angular. 
So maximum step over, but that is at the outermost edges. You can see that it has a central location there that it just spirals out from. Offset is going to require you to choose a chain geometry, projection curve, that you will offset from, either on the left side or the right side of it. So this actually allows you to choose your own pattern here rather than just spiraling and radialing. And then user defined, this is simply just a projection of a curve onto a surface. So you can use this for three-dimensional engraving, or if there's some sort of trim pattern you're looking for, this can be used in a, in a variety of different ways. There's really no way to say exactly what you can do with this one toolpath. So I'll just put that back to spiral. Because I like to contrast that with the use of a 2D boundary. So again, this, uh, this option exists in HSS Express, but it can be a little more helpful when you're doing this sort of projection. Maybe I'm looking for a spiraling toolpath, but I'm not actually looking to, um, to do the entire surface. Maybe I just want to get a spiraling looking toolpath in the middle there. So what we can actually do is define it as being trimmed by that shape right there, projected in the Z direction. And then in terms of the center point, I'm just going to click on the center of that circle. If it's constrained by that circle, we should get just a simple spiraling toolpath dead center of that circle. Now you can do this with any type of geometry. This is really just sketch geometry. To review how to select the chain geometry for this particular option, I refer you to the pocketing operation in this intro series. Okay, and there you go. So now dead center, spiraling out. I got it to auto detect the radius for me. So now I have a nice little finishing toolpath just in one little area there. For the last option here, this is using the morph between boundary curves, but we can actually see a really good application of it, and that is the corner radius on this part here. So I've chosen all those surfaces that represent the corner rad. I've chosen the top edge and the bottom edge as my start curve and my bottom curve. And what I get is a, a nice corner rounding kind of toolpath here. And I can do this with a ball end mill or a bull end mill. I don't necessarily need a corner round tool to achieve that, just by blending that across those entire surfaces. You can do this with chamfers. You can do this with fillets. You can do this with any kind of surface that has that kind of continuous kind of snaking kind of pattern there. As long as you've got some sort of curve to follow, you can do parallel to curve perpendicular to curve, you can morph between boundary curves. HSS is a finishing toolpath that lets you do a lot of this sort of stuff here. Um, and you can use this for roughing as well with the options you'll find in the roughing and more section. Uh, oftentimes, this is one option compared to the other 3D options available from the, uh, the milling module. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.